present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, welcome everyone. <clears throat> Greetings. Greetings and salutations. And salutations. Salivations? Salivations, yes. That depends on what woman you're looking at. Salivations. Ooh. Oh, me, I forgot me uh, Jesse Ventura Boa. Oh my God. Because being that the weather is uh, starting to get nippy out there. Uh -huh. You know, it is autumn. Yeah, but it ain't winter, but this is winter uh, almost uh, uh, temperatures, you know? I, I have been convinced a long time ago that climate change, global warming is very real. Between the, the, uh, the volatility of the weather throughout the world with this additional storms and, you know, and, and the climate itself, climate change itself, uh, melting of the well, poles and uh, storms and, tor and more uh, tornadoes, you know, bad tornadoes, typhoons and such. Even though the hurricane season was not any quiet this knock year. Knock on wood. Yes, night. Knock on Blackthorn Shaleli. Oh my head. We haven't, we haven't, uh, there hasn't been any uh, hurricanes that gained enough force to be considered dangerous or, or came close to the east coast and to touch to touch land on the yeah. east coast now blackthorn it, from ireland uh, does that season end in november or december hey with, with i the, think it's november with the extra mild autumn we had this year we're, we're having i think it would be extended with climate change Could be. but anyway let me get the formalities out of the way welcome everyone to uncensored hard-hitting truth uh, I'm your host James P Madonna of Mega Life 21 and I am here with my longtime illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of newsletter censored in 1977 the Reverend dr. William J Isom and how are you feeling this week sir and I know it's not too good well, I'm already hungry. You know? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm I'm physically fine except for the allergies. Who knows? Well, the only allergy that's right now is working is mold. Mold spores. Mold spores. And that's what I'm sneezing about. Oh, over. Nothing to sneeze at. That's not to sneeze at either. <laughs> okay. <coughs> get down to business. Let's get down to business. And business is very serious. Yeah. Very, very, very serious this time. Oh boy. Okay, I don't have a lot to say. I only have a few paragraphs, but they're pretty deep. Uh, the mainstream poor, low income, minorities, and young people have dug their own graves mm -hmm. because of their apathy. If you don't know what apathy means, look it up on the Merriam Webster online dictionary go to google apathy apathy how could a do-nothing republican house of representatives controlled with the lowest approval rating in history win re-election since we uh, vastly outnumber the right-wing fanatics the little guy simply did not show up and vote Ballot flipping was also reported uh -huh. in Maryland and North and, Carolina. That's right, right, sir. And who knows where else uh -huh. and how often? But are the Democrats contesting this? Not yet. Did Al Gore? Not did Al Gore contest uh, when he got ripped off by G uh, by uh, 
G.W. Bush at Cheney, the and election? The Supreme Court? Did he contest the Supreme Court? No. I don't think so. So, you know, the little guy that I just mentioned, little guys and gals, have uh, hammered in the last nail into their pine box. They have sealed their fate. They have themselves to blame because, like I said before, the little guy vastly outnumbers the right-wing nuts. And uh, they just simply did not care. Apathy. Only 27% of those eligible to vote showed up. It's despicable. You should be ashamed of, you, of yourself. And uh, if anybody who complains on the uh, uncensored, hard-hitting truth uh, Facebook group, my first question is, did you vote this past election? I don't want to hear about midterms or, 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 or whatever. Did you vote? And that includes if your governor was up for election, re-election. Did you vote? If you didn't vote, I am not interested in your complaint. Well, the statistics <laughs> yeah. bore out. Whenever there is a low turnout, the Republicans have an advantage. Yeah, because the, the Republicans and the right-wing nuts, they're fanatics, so they make it their business to vote. Yeah, but when, <sighs> when the electorate, uh, you know, turns itself out, they don't have the power that they believe they have in the United States of America, where they think that everybody's conservative. They're not. So, when there's a low turnout, they can win. Yeah, when, when, when there isn't, they lose. When a Republican politician ever says, the American people have uh, voiced their opinion, the American people are not going to stand for what these liberals are doing. They're not going to stand for Ob Obama. They don't want Obamacare. They're only speaking for themselves because the American people are happier than a pig in, in, in slop to have health care that they never had before. Oh, they're going to try to change it. The little guy, the, the poor the and subsidy. the low income, huh? It's going to the Supreme Court, again, about the subsidies. What do you mean, corporate or, or the little guy subsidies to help the to poor? To help the little guy and et cetera, but, yes, the but, but the subsidies, the free uh, uh, corporate welfare is going oh, to... that's fine. That's fine. I'm talking about the subsidies for the people who can't afford the uh, insurance under Obamacare. They're going to get a subsidy from the government. And now they're making a big thing about the Congress didn't write the raw law right uh, because it has something to do with the the exchanges. You don't get no subsidies if you're not under an exchange like okay. a New Jersey exchange. It's a complicated thing, but it's going to go to the Supreme Court, and guess what's going to happen? Supreme Court is 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 controlled by by conservatives. Right yeah, now, five right, of them. right now, five of them. Yeah, there should actually be uh, limited terms for for everybody, even the Supreme Court. Oh no, no, they put them in there to make them honest. They did for life, tenure for life. Honest, and that makes them honest. That's like the cartoon I posted. Of the guy who says, he says, oh, "Hi, I'm Bob. I'm 32 years old, and and uh, I'm I'm an honest politician." And then the the other girl was a hooker and says, "Yeah, yeah." And I'm he alive. says, yeah, "I'm a virgin. I'm I'm a prostitute. I'm Hi, a I'm a prostitute, and I'm a virgin." <laughs> <laughs> Listen, did these imbecilic numbskulls out in the red states, these rednecks, did, did they ever ask themselves one question before, uh, you know, they went out and voted? Is my life any better now since I've had I since I voted in Republicans like Mitch McConnell and and and, and uh, Paul Ryan? Is my or Ted Cruz? Is my life any better? What have they done for me? Just name two things, please. You know, forget about what they've done for the rich. What have they done for me? Is my life any better? <laughs> the answer is no. It's worse. So why? Do something insane, like vote in people that are uh, that are only helping the rich, and not helping me. I mean, I mean, me being you know one of these nuts that vote Republican, <coughs> or somebody that doesn't have a job, or somebody that that <coughs> isn't making <coughs> money, like uh, minimum wage and 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 the middle class. Oh, what's that? What's her name? Joni Ernst. 
Joni Ernst, the hog castrator. She's the one that said, uh, she's the one that said, uh, I'm sure Joni Ernst, the hog castrator, has been living high on the hog. She's the one that no, said. No, that's low on the hog. Low on the hog. That's why right. you get it low on the hog. Got the balls off. But she, she's the one that said that a person today in America could live fine on the, on the current minimum wage. Oh, yeah. She's just talking out of her ass. Well, let's see now. The current minimum wage gives you about fifteen thousand a year, something like that. Right. The uh, uh, one person under poverty today is twenty-one thousand or something. So if you're only making fifteen thousand, what does that put you? Way below. You the can't poverty live level. on that. Where do they get their logic from when they talk? They have no logic. Number one. And you see, like your friend over there, your idiot. Uh, Not my friend. Uh, uh, Who the troll? Tro the troll. Your troll over there. I mean, he makes up his own facts. You talking about Jono Miklos? Yeah, Miklos. He makes up his own uh, facts. Yeah, he just pulls things out of the air. Yeah. What did you call him, Mister Word Salad? He, yeah, he indulges in word salads when he yaks. You know, when he when he says yeah. something, you can't follow his logic. He just he just blurts out things, you know. There's like there's, talking points. There's no, there's no tries to sew them together. There's no connection. There, 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 there's no proof. He never he never presents any proof. At least most of his proofs are straw men. At least other proof, other trolls that I banished from the group in the mm -hmm. past. At least they posted articles. I mean, they were right wing articles, you know, yeah. but they were articles. But this guy doesn't post anything, no. you know, to to back up what he says. But uh. Yeah, so they just look. They say what they say because they don't care. They're, the haves have what they, what they want, and they got the have-nots to agree with them. And they suckered the have-nots to agree, agree with them. Now, now that that banner uh, that I posted, well, Mark Twain's quotes. Mm -hmm. It's easy. It's it's easier. It's to easier fool. to uh, wait a minute. To uh, it's uh, easier to fool people than it is to convince Unfool. them that they have been fooled. Yeah, yeah that's true. It's Once the they, same thing. It's it's very hard to have a person unlearn something. You know that he believes is true. That then that's how come why you got these rednecks with the religion stuff with the Republicans? Isn't it? They can't unlearn it. No. Isn't it interesting how we you have people like myself, Reverend Doctor Bill over here. Gary Noll, Ralph Nader, Jesse Ventura, uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, 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 Elizabeth. Uh, uh, well, I don't know Elizabeth Warren that well. I haven't really heard her speak. Well, she's more progressive than uh, you know than the ones you mentioned, I guess. Yeah, but but I mean, I mean, I'm talking about the independents who are true independent free thinkers that could see through all this bullshit. You know, and and make their own decisions. Uh, aside, you know, compared to the lemmings. Well, you know, you can go back in history to the Enlightenment, to the Renaissance, and etc. I mean, it was progressives who yes. pulled who pulled people in the direction of evolution. We would have never evolved if it weren't for progressive throughout history. Yeah. Because the uh, the conservatives, they just stay in one place. Well, Stability. I well, love it. The, compre the, 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 the progressives, they were the scientists, like the Greek scientists and philosophers of, of ancient Greece, oh, your that. Galileos, your Leonardo da Vinci's, uh, Copernicus, uh, Isaac Newton. Yeah, yeah. These yeah, were all, pro all these progressives. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, even Nostradamus. These are progressive, brilliant, or genius people. These are uh, Martin Luther of Germany. That challenge the Catholic Church. Exactly. Progressives. Yes. They lead humanity forward. Which is the word progress. Conserva Pro exactly. Progressive. Exactly. Conservatives right. are, they're satisfied with staying in one place. Listen, if you had a project that, you know, was really, really deep and revolutionary and, and meaningful as far as, let's say, educating people or helping people, let's say helping the poor, a conservative relative of yours, the first thing out of his mouth would say, you making any money out of it? If, if so, how much? There you go. Okay. 
a progressive rel relative would say, I think that's fantastic. I, I find that interesting. Please tell me more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But a conservative, and I got relatives like that, no matter what I did. Hey, hey, you making any money out of it, James? There you go. You, you working? You working? You making money? It, even even Brian Slade did, did that to me. Their my, God, my friend. Their God you, is. You making any money? You working? Their God is all the, the dollar. All the fucking guineas do that. And their church is the bank. God is their money, and the, their church is the bank. That's great. And they have theirs, and they don't care what, what anybody no. else has or lack of. You know, no. uh, you know a um, a um, uh, internet dating site. Um, I think it's called Plenty of Fish. Plenty, as, as in plenty of fish in the sea. Plenty of fish. Uh, P O F. They made a statement. They said that the mm -hmm. number one thing, the number one factor that determines the success of your relationship is income, your income, which I thought was a terrible thing to say because materialism and, and money and the ability to make money or the lack of money has nothing to do with love and friendship and relationship. And the, so, you know, they're just sucking up to all the gold diggers, all the money-grubbing gold diggers. Well, that's how perverted many people are today. That's that's what it's all about. Materialistic mm -hmm. society. You know, there's no connection. Nah, well, as I say, the conservatives and Republicans lack oxytocin, the hormone. Read to Timothy in the Bible. It, it describes how people will become in the end times. Very, very accurate. Without yeah. natural affection. Oh, yes. Uh, I, um... Well, anyway, I should have. I lost the can. I was gonna bring it. I got some uh, chunky soup. Uh, uh, it was um, New England clam chowder, and I and it was mostly. I got it from Aldi's, but it wasn't Aldi's brand, it, or it could have been. It had a different name, and uh, Aldi's is a is a um, supermarket that has quality food at a lower price, but you have to bring your own bags. Yes. Okay, and um, I think it's based in Illinois, the headquarters. But anyway, I go there because there's a lot of great things, a lot of good values I get. I, I thought it was from Germany. It, it might be a German company. Yes. I mean, I read the ingredients. I'm, I'm a very good shopper, and I know how to read the ingredients. But, uh, man, this New England clam chowder was mostly potatoes. I couldn't find any clams. Oh, my God. It's, which is typical of... It was Campbell's? Food. No, no. Oh, no. It was typical of food companies today. Of course. They put in fillers. They put in fillers. They'll, they'll give you a big package and you open it up and it's like... They'll, they'll shrink the, the amount and ch charge you the same or more. It's a rip-off. And now that Republicans are in, I, they'll, they'll, there will be even more deregulation. More and, pink slime allowed, etc. And, et cetera, and et cetera. rip offs. See, you people are really brain cell deficient in America. I'm not just talking about the, the southern and western states. What about all the Republicans that got elected uh, recently in the traditional northern blue states? Like Scott Walker in, in Wisconsin won re election, right? Was it Wisconsin? I believe so. Again, and the and uh, oh, who, who's that uh, that funny looking, ball headed troll in Rick Florida? Rick Scott from Florida. That that corrupt Rick Scott. Corrupt, yes. Won his reelection, and I'm sure all the crackers in in uh, northern and central Both Florida. Both of them are under investigation. Voted for for and, and they won reelection. Yes. Just like Chris Christie, everybody complained about Chris Christie, but he won reelection. And we're still investigating him. These are people that are being investigated that won re-election. It's unheard of. You know, Minnesota, the state of uh, 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 Hubert Humphrey and George McGovern, they, they voted in uh, that idiot Michelle Bachman. Again? No, no, she's leaving. No, no, she, oh, she's, she's leaving. She, oh, uh, she's got a part in a... In a Don't one let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. She has a part in a Wonder Woman movie. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw you see, something you about see what that. happens when you when you flap your gums and you you just to be in a spotlight. Hollywood notices you, and they offer you a part. And they never notice how how many times you're wrong. No. You know? Infamy. Infamy in today's it's, society it's, will get you farther exactly. than, than talent and intelligence, you know, uh, 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 improving yourself, making your mark based on merit. Mm -hmm. Infamy, the more underhanded things and sleazy things you do, it just gets you in the spotlight. You end up with uh, your own your own movie or whatever documentary or TV show or you get a, you get a job on uh, 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 on some news or sports show or something yeah like Oliver North and etc yeah. etc you know Judith Miller Fox News yeah somebody um, <laughs> I was um, some someone had a, uh, a, a um, I saw someone had a couple of uh, miniature uh, baby uh, pot-bellied pigs Piggies, for pets. Yeah. They're becoming popular, and they're not expensive, but they're very smart. Yeah. Man, they these were the cutest. I was playing with them for a while. They were so cute and smart too. Mm. They are they are really lovable pets. So uh, one of the people that was with the owner says. Yeah, you know, Miley Cyrus has a pet pig. I says, Miley Cyrus has a pig? Miley Cyrus is a pig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they laughed. I, they, you know, of course, it's, it's, it's true and it's very funny. Anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings on this doomsday uh, show that we're doing. Um, Doomsday scenario here. R.I.P. Rest in peace, United States of America, which has succumbed to lunacy. Uh, we've done it before. Succumbed to lunacy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the it's first time, new. the first time the Republican House of Representatives took power, that was lunacy. Well, that's recent. The do, the do well, nothing. We've done it before many times. The do nothing House of Representatives. Yeah, ninety-six point four percent were all reelected, and 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 they and they infested with their with their virus of of uh, corruption. They infested the Senate now, and people people just uh, voted them in. They just voted them in. Voted them I think in. they voted them in because they don't want the black man in the White House. I think they did it to spite Barack Obama. Well, the point out is, of racism. Barack Obama had nothing to do with this election. He's not on the ballot no, anywhere. No, I know. He he even he even campaigned for only one Democrat. I yeah, think. yeah, he was down there with no, uh, Michelle I, Nunn. I think. I, I think they did it to spite, to spite President Obama. I, I think that was, or they're just stupid. They're just that stupid. Well, the stupidity has been going on for a long time because they continue to uh, re-elect the incumbents. Even when they're doing a bad job, they continue to do it. Are they afraid of change? Hey, bingo! What about what about something called uh, a reviewing your employees that you hired, uh, holding your uh, your elected leaders' feet to the fire? Oh. What about making them accountable for what they did four years of being in office? They don't do that. No, they don't do, they that. Don't do that. No, they believe a lot of bullshit lies like Scott Garrett's lies uh, when he was campaigning. Did yeah, he, he got reelected too. Oh, he did? Yes. Son of a gun. Scott yeah. Garrett got reelected by the idiots in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Sleaze ball Garrett. Because, because uh, did you see all the commercials about, uh, what's his name, Roy Cho? Well, he lied, uh, Garrett lied on all of his commercials. It was frivolous. It had to do with him voting. Well, yeah, but he, he he lied about he oh he never went after Social Security he never went after Medicaid he never went after Medicare he never went after the the, the, the welfare etc all bunch of lies. So the same pe the same people Always. the same people who reelected the the uh, obese demon Chris Christie reelected the demon Scott Garrett they the same idiots in New Jersey which is supposed to be you know a blue state blue state yeah 
What stupid asses. Mm -hmm. You know what? You people are despicable. Shame on you for being so fucking stupid. Well, you know what they say. What? The, they deserve the government they get. Yeah, but they, unfortunately, we don't. And we get it too. The good people get yeah, screwed. Exactly. Because of the idiots. Exactly. I think that was uh, Grover Cleveland who said that. Uh, the, the American people will get exactly the government that they deserve. Right. But unfortunately, they do take with them all the good people. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm targeting even more... So more than the idiots that vote Republican over and over with a, with a horrible track record that they have, I'm targeting the people who were apathetic and stood home. The little guy did not vote. The minorities, uh, blacks and Hispanics, did not really vote. The young people in America did not really vote. Um, um, only the seniors got their asses out there and voted. Um, so what I say, young people, minorities, um, right. uh, yeah, these people didn't vote. And, and um, you know, what one, per one young person in their 20s said to me, oh, they're all corrupt, so why bother? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they are all corrupt, but you have to vote for the lesser of the two evils that and would... get the system changed. You, you can't, look, you want to vote for somebody that's going to at least help you a little and throw you a few Crumb. crumbs? Or do you want to vote for somebody that's going to do nothing for you? A little bit of crostini, please, with some garlic and oil on it, please! Not even a breadstick, not, not even a sesame seed off of a breadstick will a Republican <laughs> give you. Yeah. So you still have to vote, you still... Oh boy, oh boy. You know, capitalism is the devil's economics. But anyway... But again, remember, only 27% 20, of those eligible to vote voted. So, yeah. actually, you can't even call it a stinking election. No, it, it wasn't a, like, like Jono, a jerk off Jono says, it wasn't a landslide because. Landslide at 27%, because, you ain't going to get nothing because like America that. Because America really wanted the Republicans to control Washington. And the whole United States. No, it's because of the apathy and the uh, indifference, whatever you want to call it, the apathy of the 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 bulk of the population mm -hmm. of the mainstream. Yeah, the majority of voters the, did not vote. Yeah, aside aside from whether they're poor, or low income, women, minorities, the majority stood home or wherever they were. You know, they they did not feel that it was a priority in their precious schedule and in, in their little world their little clique they did not feel it was worth their while to vote it, it would only take a few minutes you know they, they didn't do it and that's it they just they sealed their doom their own fate doom. Their doom. okay go ahead reminds me of a movie I tried to watch <coughs> excuse me a movie I tried to watch last night on Facebook <laughs> full-length movie. Yeah. Plan 9 from Outer Space with Bella Lugosi. Bella Lugosi? Bella Lugosi. But Bella Lugosi wasn't, wasn't Count Dracula, right? No. Oh, send me that link. How do I send you a link? I, you know, it's on Facebook and today it will be gone. I'll look on YouTube. What's the name of the movie? It's on YouTube. Plan 9 from Outer Space. And Bela Lugosi, his attempt to not be a vampire. But it was so amateurish. Low budget? Low budget. Oh, what do you want? <laughs> it was like the 50s, like the 1950s, what do they call them, B-movies, right? Yeah, it had flying saucers and they were just the... Uh, what do you think Flash Gordon was? They had little... Yeah, but Flash Gordon was a little... They, they had, little you know, the, what do you call them, the, the sizzlers? The sparklers. Sparklers yeah. in back of the, <laughs> in back of the spaceship. And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and of course they had, if you really look closely, you might see uh, little like strings, you know. Yeah. This was even more uh, low budget, believe me. And the Hawkmen, you know, remember oh, them? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Anyway... The real story that should emerge from Tuesday's election is that only one-third of eligible American voters took to the polls. 
This is a sad reality that seems all too familiar each November. Yes, not just once. The Republicans tout that the nation has spoken. <laughs> what did I say before? <laughs> and the public is sick and tired of the unwillingness of President Obama to, re to negotiate in a bipartisan manner. They don't believe in bipartisan uh, compromise. They want no, their way. No, bipartisan, that's right, that's what it means. <laughs> you give me what I want, that's bipartisan. And the American people agree wholeheartedly with Republicans, according to Republicans. Yes. All right. How can any political party claim that their voice is the one heard by the nation when we never really get a full glimpse of how America feels. Two-thirds of our voters did not participate in an election that had the power to change the overall and the House of Representatives. To all who voted, I congratulate you. Oh yeah. Well, big deal. They gave away the whole country on taking the opportunity to have your voices heard. To all who didn't vote, I say shame on you for not taking the advantage of a freedom we are blessed to have. And that people died in, in war to provide us. Eli Wiesel <laughs> taught us that indifference is so much worse than hatred. The real issue shaping our nation has nothing to do with economy, religion, or health care. It has to do with the growing I don't care yeah. attitude of the voters. Democracy was never intended to be a spectator sport. We don't want to be involved in politics, we just want to party. Oh yeah, well Brian Slate told me, my friend, yeah, we're not interested in politics, we, we just want to party. The hedonism, hedonistic lifestyle, me, 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 feel good. Or it's just too much of a hassle to get out there and vote. And a lot of people feel that you know, okay, you know, if it's a two-party system, what is really going to change? But there are significant differences between the two parties. They, 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 they're both corporatists, but like I said, get those crumbs instead of nothing, at least. Get the crumbs, baby. That's correct. <clears throat> On election day, Almost 37% of eligible voters put Republicans in power in both houses of Congress. Now that they have a majority, they have pledged to work, to work yeah. for a better America. Work for a better America. Work. The ones that have been on vacation for six weeks, the ones that work, uh, what, uh, two days a week? Yeah, work my ass. For all. <sighs> They're going to work for us all. By putting forth a positive agenda. Yeah, not just obstruct everything that's good for the country. Uh, let's see, this positive agenda, I wonder if it took in the... Um, the other day, the uh, Dodd-Frank bill, which was supposed to curtail the financial activities of Wall Street, yeah. they made a little change, which Barney Frank is pissed off about because him and Dodd wrote the bill, mm -hmm. and uh, nothing's going to happen to the big boys and girls. You know about Citizens United, that's going to go out the window, right? Out the window? Hell no, that's not going to change at all. No, I mean, I mean it's not going to change for the better. Of course not. Yeah, I could see. You uh, get rid of it. I could see Bernie Sanders is pretty upset. Do you see anybody? Here, here we go now. Do you see anybody on the Supreme Court? Because that's where you're only going to get uh, anything that will have any power to it. Uh, examining the cases. 
going back to the 1800s and the Santa Clara uh, Railroad uh, bill that supposedly gave corporations personhood and finding out that it was only a head note by a corrupt law clerk that there is no precedent whatsoever yet they built on this fictional precedent all these years. But do you see anybody going back there to change things? Because they're probably paid off by the corporations. The, that's what it was. The, the corrupt head, the, 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 the clerk, worked for the railroads. No, I, I mean the Supreme Court now. They're, 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 they follow the election returns. That's what they do. Why do, They're why, supposed to be independent. Why do these Supreme Court justices have to be like emperors and, 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 and be there for life like the Pope? I mean, who, who the hell invented that law? Well, that was supposedly to protect them against influence peddlers. Influence. They're influenced. Exactly. It didn't work, did it? No. The best laid plans of mice and men. Mm. They usually don't work. Several prominent Republican leaders already have begun that process. In a recent column, George Will recommended that the first positive actions Republicans should pursue yeah. include, here we go, abolishing the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So. Any, any government agency that they feel like putting the axe to. This is just not any. This is the one that Elizabeth Warren was supposed to be the, in charge of uh, so that she could get at the banks who caused the problem. So there will be it will, uh, the, the American consumer and cit American citizen, there will be open season by the we'll, elitists and corporations on the American consumer. We'll continue to take it up the ass. They will, they will, they might even uh, put poison in your food and not even label it and be allowed to do that. Aren't they now? I mean, what do you think? GMO is some fictional thing? It's in process now. Yeah. They tried, the, the, the Monsanto is... Soy, corn. There's a big... Uh, court case in Hawaii. Monsanto wants to push their GMOs on the big island of Hawaii. And the Hawaiians, uh, either they voted on it or they're going to vote on it or uh, uh, this uh, Trans-Pacific crap partnership. partnership. They want to be able to sue. How, how the hell is Monsanto going to sue another country for not using their seed? Other countries will say, ha! No, they won't. Fuck you. Because the TPP takes away sovereignty from countries. They are not in charge. They are not allowed to make their decisions. An arbiter for the companies will be making these decisions. Okay. How is sovereignty the, how, is gone. How is the United States going to bully the whole world if all countries join not against the United, against the United States? I just said it. The United States will not be doing that. Corporations will. Sovereignty is taken away from the country. So the go so the the leaders of the governments cannot cannot apprehend Monsanto with military might. Not under the TPP and that other. You think they're going to pay attention thing. to the TPP, the mil the leaders of these countries? Absolutely. They'll, they'll, if they they wanted to, they could what shoot them on sight. What happened with NAFTA? With oh, the, uh, the, the the gasoline additive in Canada where they wanted to ban it. They weren't allowed to. They, these, these trade deals take away the sovereignty of the countries so that the corporations can rule. Yeah, That's what it's all about. I like to see them try it with China or North Korea. I like to see them go over there, go over there and, and wave their, their, their legal papers in front of their face. Well, we'll see. You know, we'll see. All right, finish this one reading. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau works to prevent predatory lending, abusive, 
and deceptive credit company policies and unlawful mortgage foreclosures. Do you see why the Republicans want to get rid of it? He protects the little guy. Yeah, well, the, and the, but the little guy didn't feel like voting. The second positive act would be to abolish the Independent Payment Advisory Board, which seeks to reduce Medicare costs and is estimated to save the federal government $28 billion through 2019. You think those, uh, those, um, those um, rip-off bank fees will come back? They're already here. They brought it back? Of course they did. Because Obama, Obama put a stop to all those fees. Obama did nothing, and he can do nothing. Why? Because he doesn't make laws. So The those, president only enforces so, the laws. So all those bank fees that, let's say, Bank of America was screwing people over on, are still in effect? Still in effect. They can do anything they want. I just told you about the Dodd-Frank. They have defanged it. Oh, hey. They have defanged it. I didn't. I didn't vote Republican, so it's not me. It's it's all those, the, you know. But we are paying the price. Yeah. Well, we 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 made our statement definitely. In the same vein, the positive agenda seeks to end the tax on medical devices, which would cost twenty nine billion dollars from 2013 to, 20, to 2022. Tax on medical devices. Yeah. Money which is used to help fund the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. <sighs> what about helping veterans, the working poor, and single mothers? That will not happen. By not reinstating funds for food stamps, or supporting a higher minimum wage, or government spending on infrastructure jobs. None of that will happen. Hmm. Maybe in 2016, <laughs> the other 63% of voters who sat this one out will wake up and elect people who will make America great again for all of us. Not just the rich and the lobbyists. Mm -hmm. Well, all I have to say is to you people out there, not that you're going to pay attention, not that you're going to listen to me, but there is no trickle-down economics. Fools, lemmings, it's siphoned up to the top 20% and eventually the 1% economics, the devil's economics, siphoned up. There is no trickle-down. There never was any trickle-down. It was all a lie from your patron saint, Ronald Reagan, when he made it popular. Siphon up. All right? It's a siphon. It's you, all a... You uh, numbskulls that don't know what it is. It's all a propaganda to protect the rich from the... Um, so what's the word I'm looking for here? The... Uh, the rich are um, tr constantly trying to find ways to protect and to uh, get rid of, in the minds of people, the fact that they're greedy. They're, 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 and that's what all their propaganda tries to do. There's a distraction. Yes. Yes. Exactly. It's like it's like a uh, um, look a, over there. It's like look, yeah, look at over there. The, the oldest trick in the book. Look at over there. It's like a band of jewelry thieves that, that are that go around robbing jewelry stores and they have one person that talks to the sales clerk as a decoy yeah. and the others go behind and they take their little, little tool out and lift the glass and stuff all the diamond uh, necklaces and tennis bracelets and all the fine jewelry in the, in the, in the bag and then they have the uh, getaway car right in front of the place, and they all run in and take off. This is a distraction. So the Republicans use this, just like they use Fox News, the insane asylum Fox News, you know, 
Well, they, they, it's, everything's probably scripted to be part of the brainwashing. And the imbeciles out yonder, down south, and out west, the religious nut cultists, they suck it up, they believe it. Right. You know, that, 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 them there, demi, demi-crats are going to take my guns. Or take my guns. Take my guns. Uh, who was it on, uh, I believe on your one of your pages last night? Uh, somebody had said something about animals, you know, the bad treatments and all this stuff. Yeah. And killing and stuff. And uh, someone said, it was Gary Noel put it up. And he's, uh, he said, Gary, uh, you're... If you if you're for these animals and everything and like that, how come you're for abortion? They're not. It's unrelated. Uh, well, it's unrelated, and the fact of the matter is, abortion has nothing to do with killing the baby per se. It's a choice issue. Yeah, but these idiots believe that a fertilized egg and a fetus is is a baby, is a human being. These idiots believe as Santorum and others have uh, put out there. If you were raped, you should have the baby because it's what God wanted. So they don't want women to have a choice of about anything. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Interesting. Small one here. Okay. We'll, we'll knock that off and then we'll take lunch. In the same vein, mm -hmm. The American public is unfortunately not knowledgeable. Bingo. Voting is often based on misinformation. Most of the presidential aspirants are plainly unqualified. In the past, the overrated Ronald Reagan and the ineffective Jimmy Carter got elected. Rarely do we get surprised with capably, capability and integrity as we did with Harry Truman. Voters need to get educated. Their future is at stake. Mm -hmm. No, our future is at stake. That's very true. Okay? With them. And of course it's not mere education because uh, these people will not educate themselves because their ide ideology answers all their questions. They have no questions. So how can they be educated? To be educated, you have to say, wait a minute. I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. You know? Question. question. Have the ability to question. Have the desire to question. And as you, that's part of learning. That, that is learning, for God's yeah. sakes. Yes. That's it. You know, it's not like... Um, you're in school, like I, I, I was at, took a college course one time, and uh, I questioned the professor, and, and you know, and he got all egotistical about it and upset. You questioned his ideology. You know. You know. All he had to do was was uh, defend his thoughts and back it up. You know, and then you know, if there's a debate. There's a debate, a normal discussion, you know. No, I no. did that as a young man. Yeah. I mean, a very young man in a science class. And the science teacher was dealing with the, the uh, cosmos and the first cause, so to speak, how it was, how the cosmos came to be. Mm hmm And of course, my question was, well, how did that happen? I mean, when they talk about the cosmos in the beginning, the Big Bang or whatever, mm -hmm. I think the Big Bang is now disqualified or whatever, but the point of it is, mm -hmm. what caused that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, you don't, you don't want to just settle for the fact that things just happen at a, exactly. at a, at a nowhere. Exactly. Yeah. Or like a little speck became the universe. Well, how the hell does that happen? Yeah. And how the hell is it? If you use TNT and you blow up something, 
Is there organization after that? Or is it total chaos and toho and boho and whatever? Right. When you blow something up. Nothing forms like no. the Big Bang. No. Big Bang. Boom! And a universe forms? What yeah. the hell? You know? Ridiculous. Yeah, an intelligent person would, uh, would analyze something in uh, research yeah. and ask questions. Uh, that's a that's a sign of a, of a pretty ad mentally advanced child that that has the ability and uh, to do that. Of course, you know. And, uh, of course, but if you've been if it's been hammered into your brain all your life, your stupid ideology, you're not questioning anything. No. Now, what was the percentage of um, of the mainstream in, uh, this the past? Voters? So, yeah, that I have a I have a number of twenty seven percent, but these people are saying thirty seven. Thirty seven percent voted. Voted, yeah. The rest sixty three did not. So you might as well say two thirds did two -thirds not vote. Two thirds did not vote. You know, not a whole, and that's eligible voters, okay? Eligible, eligible. registered voters, the electorate itself. Right. Two thirds did not participate. Well, I think that these um, um, people that were spellbound enough to not care and not vote, um, I think they uh, are more to blame than the, the crazy people that got out there and voted Republican. The apathy of the, uh, the little guy in the mainstream, I believe that they have also fulfilled end time prophecy what do you think by allowing republicans to control well, the united well, states yeah, well speed it up at least well i said that back when george bush was elected well if you'll read my uh, you know web page well now it's pretty pathetic now well, they have control of the entire congress yeah. And they have the Supreme Court on their side. The point of it Yikes. all is that wh wh whatever is going to happen is it's all going to be negative, not positive. Yeah, For the little guy and yeah. the worker and the middle class. It will not be positive. No, and every election That's that comes around, less and less of America votes. Well, you can't just sit back and do nothing. That's because, you know, the, the, one of the problems is, again, they are all corrupt. Well, that's true. The two-party system but is no you, good. Yeah. But if you're not going to vote and make changes to the system, it shall remain the same. The system has to be changed. Correct. And you can't do that unless you're in the system. Right. And, and, and money will always be in politics because... Uh, well, no, I'm, what I'm saying is you will have corruption in politics as... Uh, as long as you have the money in politics. That's correct. That's correct. You yeah. will, the corruption will not go away if but the, the money is, is there. But the point is all of us on the outside can yammer and yammer and yammer about these things and nothing will ever you get done I'm so sick. because the only ones that make the law changes are those that are in the system. You know what? I'm so sick and tired of these people online and social uh, network media like Facebook and they every day they post and post and post and complain and bellyache profusely uh, every day and night they go on and on and on I'm just wondering how many of them actually vote at every election yeah, well. I'm not interested in hearing your complaints unless you voted mm -hmm. otherwise you have no right to complain you have no right to complain and then there is the it's other duty. There is the other fact what? that people just don't understand that it could be you that is in the Congress to make those votes. They don't understand that. It's always they have this this. this oh, he's better than me. You know, he's more uh, because they 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 speak a legal language. They uh, they're. Uh, they're all dressed up and they're um, yeah. and they're overpaid naturally yeah. but nobody holds their feet to the fire nobody the, the the voters in every state do not hold them accountable no. for their actions nobody gets involved 
Well, you, I mean, uh, people back down when Chris Christie yells at them at town hall meetings. They, they are intimidated. They, you know, Republicans, of course, they believe that uh, you know we are a republic, not a democracy, and that in a republic, we vote for people to go to Washington mm -hmm. and govern. Govern? Supposedly on our behalf, <laughs> but they don't. No. They govern for those who have. You see? And those who have not can go to die, and starve in the gutter. Well, that's correct, because, you know, you want they, in actuality, they want to go back to America in the like, 1700s, the 1800s, when it was a hard life in America. But there was one thing you had in America at that time, most people. Land. Land. That's correct. You had everybody had a family farm. Only when they moved to the city did you have starvation and etc. When you had to depend on the man for your survival. Yeah. yeah. The only bad thing about back then, of course they didn't know any better because it's it's relative, you know, they they didn't know of modern technology. But, you know, the problem is back then you had many diseases that you could die from, you know. Uh, um, um, Just by living in the city. Smallpox. Uh, um, Shit being thrown in out the windows. Yellow, yellow food, fever. Uh, spit being on the, uh, the sidewalks. Yellow fever. If you um, had sidewalks. I'm tra tubercul tuberculosis, yeah, 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 yeah. they call it consumption back then. All of that stuff. Uh, many uh, diseases, typhoid. But there was uh, no help from the government for any of these things, any people back then. That's what they want to return to. So That's what they mean right. when they say freedom. So you had to, to go to a doctor back then, you had to pay out of pocket? You give them, bring them a chicken, man. Yeah, it was mostly barter. A lot of people. There was no real money back then. Banks had uh, promissory notes, uh, uh, bank acceptances, this, that, and the other thing. There was no real money. So people bartered with the things they produced. That's correct. If you were, if you, if you specialize in uh, 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 hen house, you know, eggs, egg production, you barter with eggs. If you specialize in, in sheep, you barter with wool, so on, cattle, so on and so forth, uh, fruit orchards, uh, uh, livestock. You yeah, know, you bartered, bartered. But that's that's how it was once. Upon yeah. Time. Yeah, and they grew a lot of hemp, which was which was pretty positive. Yeah, what did I see uh, a, a while ago? Uh, anything that can be made with plastic can be made with hemp. Yeah, hemp plastic is supposed to be... Uh, hemp is just like uh, all-around largest cash crop that can ever be. But the only cash crop that America is protecting is the poppies in Afghanistan. <laughs> For the cocaine trade. Uh, That's what we're there for. Under the Taliban, you know, the use was going down. Now with America there, the use is skyrocketing. See, now you Do see, you need to know more? Now you see how people, how brainwashed people are to think this... Oh, we're protecting our freedom. This patriotic flag-waving Yankee Doodle Dandy, American can do no wrong, and God blesses America. Mm. They have no idea the, the the realities of of life. They have no idea what's going on. That's for certain. No idea, and they're too stupid to question to, to question and learn it. All right, we're gonna take a break. It's time for lunch, and then oh! we, and then uh, well for the Reverend Doctor Bill. And then I will, um, no, I mean, me too, me too. Anyway, uh, um, we will now go to our commercial voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, with some words of wisdom from him mm. and promo, and then we will return to the second half of this show. This doomsday show. Words of wisdom. The show of doom. And the people have themselves to blame. Make me sick. Hi, I'm William Morrow.
wake up people because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow, the third, our voiceover artist for doing promo. And we're back. Uh, okay, sir, I'm glad you enjoyed your lunch. Uh, now let us return to the readings. All right, a little lightheartedness here right now. Yeah, we sure need it. In reference to... It's all good until the woman whose otherwise easy-going husband turns hyper hypercritical every evening at dinner. He may have hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. Oh, you mean low blood sugar could make a person neurotic? It could make a person violent. Really? It could make a person uh, very, very upset. You know, my mother had Anything. it. She was passing out. Well, that too. But it, it's it, really it, can, bad. it can definitely affect your emotions, is what you're saying. Yes, yes. Okay. Low blood sugar. Or he may be pre-diabetic. My story is the same as hers. My husband is even-tempered a great partner until his sugar gets low. Well, the guy should be... Busy. Then he turns from Dr. Dr. Jekyll into Mr. Hyde. Does he know he has <coughs> hypoglycemia? My advice to her is to have a doctor check her hubby. In the meantime, he might start having an afternoon protein snack so his sugar doesn't drop by dinner, if that is, in fact, the problem. Peanut butter crackers are excellent. I must disagree. Peanut uh, butter is not excellent. Peanut butter without corn syrup or, you know, or sugar. It has to be 100% pure peanut butter with whole wheat crackers. It never worked for me. Real whole wheat crackers. Well, peanuts have... Uh, have a, a decent amount of monounsaturated fats, uh, well, which, which they never should stabilize I used to, high protein too. I used to take someone to the doctor in Clifton. Was it Clifton? I, I think know. it was Clifton. And I used to take my can of Pathmark peanuts with me. Straight peanut, peanuts. One pound can. Okay. And eat them whilst I was waiting. They always helped me. And it did not help me. You, you with still, my low blood You sugar. still got the munchies? Or, or you were still dizzy? Yes. Really? I still had the... Uh, not the extreme effects, my friend, like I had on the operating table, or a couple of weeks ago I had an attack. Worse, the body temperature drops, the shakes begin, and, and you know, some other things. No, yeah, maybe no, nothing like that. Just maybe a lightheaded. I mean, peanuts. Uh, peanuts are an excellent vegan source of uh, of uh, 
high quality protein and fatty acids. I mean, probably disregarding the gas. Not raw almonds, peanut. Not almonds, raw peanuts. Almonds are probably better. Oh, much better. Did you? There was an article that Mario Petrus is supposed to uh, send me soon. It's an article that shows you that almonds grown in the United States are not truly raw almonds. The real, the real raw almond is grown in other countries. They lie, of course, in you know, American companies about the, there is a difference between. In other words, the article explains what they do to the almond, uh -huh. and they're allowed to call it raw almonds. Uh -huh. But almonds in itself is a very healthy uh, medicinal and nutritional nut. Well, it's, uh, I've had to change my diet, and uh, at night I cannot eat as many almonds as I used to. They create too much gas. So, I now only eat maybe five, six, along with the rest of the what, nuts. What what snacks really work for you well with hypoglycemia? Well, any kind of, uh, you know, high protein, uh, like a hamburger, something like that. Uh, cubes of cheese. Some cheese. Hard cheese. Some cheese. Yeah. Um, or a good protein bar can stab off. Yeah. Like at night, sometimes, like like on uh, uh, Friday. Not a sugary protein bar. No, like one that I have right now, which is 14 grams of sugar. That's not, that's not good at all. Not good at all. <laughs> but on, on Fridays, I have my soup. And then my fish later in the day. Okay. So after I eat my soup, since I cannot, uh, for some reason, now listen to this, this is mm -hmm. crazy. I cannot eat a full uh, uh, can of soup. Really? But then I can eat a protein bar right after it. Huh? <laughs> what? Stupid, right? Eh? You would think you your stomach has more room for a soup. <laughs> Than for a solid, right? Yeah, exactly. But a actually, isolated. soups are are a very good, like almost like a semi-digested, complete one-pot meal. Soups and stews can be yeah. yeah, some good ones. Very easy to assimilate, you know. Well, I had to give up. I used to eat tuna fish for my brunch, okay. but I had to give it up because uh, the six-ounce can was not enough to tide me over till dinner time. Okay. A whole six ounce can with mayo was not enough. Instead of having tuna, why don't you get the large can of the Pacific Ocean sardines? Because I don't like sardines. I ate them for 10 years. <laughs> I hated the taste of them. It was Pacific Ocean... In mustard. But, oh, they all these has them in mustard sauce. That's how I ate them. Is that how you like them? That's the only way I could eat them. Can't eat them in oil. Can't eat them in tomato sauce. No, because the, the, the tomato sauce it has a has a metallic flavor from the can. Uh, well, it, it does really, but not the mustard is pretty good. But the mustard was the only way. Yeah, I could rich eat. source of omega three fatty acids. These sardines, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, answer from Dear Abby. Thank you for the heads up. Dozens of readers offered similar opinions about the husband's behavior, including a registered nurse who wrote, What's happening may be that his blood sugar or glucose is getting too low at the time and causing personality changes. This time of day is crucial for people with either diabetes or other insulin problems. Please suggest her husband see a doctor to have this Check. Okay. All right. Let's have that check, baby. Have that check, man. Very important. It's scary to have a, a loved one just pass out cold, uh. and 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 have their arms just hang down limp. 
you know, and and their head down, and you 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 touch them, and they're they feel cold. Cold, like, yes. It's like they had a massive uh, cardiac arrest or something. It's very scary. Mm. You know, so do something about it. Change your eating habits. Very important. Uh, so many Americans are are so filled with toxins. Well, they need they need detox very badly. I saw a. Uh I saw uh, um, somebody was watching a cooking show, and I happened to see it. And the person was grilling lettuce. What? Yeah, lettuce. It was it was a a, a Caesar salad. Grilled Caesar salad. Grilled Caesar salad. What an idiot! Uh, lettuce and of course the sauce, whatever that was, put on the lettuce. Hot salad. And crostini. With uh, garlic and oil. I like my salads cold and crisp. The point was, this was all they were eating. Now that was high carbohydrate diet. Now that kind of a diet is not good for someone who has a low blood sugar. I don't. I, I don't I, eat iceberg lettuces. Very little well, or no. This was not iceberg. This was the one that was uh, romaine. It looked like a, a stalk of corn. Really? Yeah, looks hmm. like a stock of corn. I mean, I'll eat arugula, I'll eat Swiss chard as a salad, I'll eat raw spinach, I'll eat uh, Boston bib, you know, uh, romaine, but not, no not that crap iceberg, no mm -hmm. way. And, and I like it. My salad is cold and crisp with lots of cucumbers, because I like them, and ch I like cherry tomatoes, and uh, I like uh, uh, to use chunky blue cheese salad dressing. Not the cheap crap, but the real chunky blue cheese dressing. But no sugar used, you know, in any of the dressings. All right, go ahead. Let's get back to the voting. Oh yeah, we might as well. The Republican Party should be congratulated on its victory in the Senate and the House. Yeah, for brainwashing the idiots in America. But it would be foolish and downright dangerous to view this victory as a mandate from the people. It is not. It is as much a repudiation of the failed policies of the Obama administration as it is an acknowledgement of Republican influence. Failed policies of now, the Congress, Republican Congress. Exactly, because they are the ones who will not allow the implementation of Obama's policy. You know, it's just like Major League Baseball. When the team loses in the playoffs, they blame the manager. They don't realize it's a team sport. They, bl they blame the poor manager and crucify him. Unbelievable. The GOP has much work ahead if it is to truly represent the people of this great land and reverse the lack of leadership tattered economy and standing in the world we have witnessed over the past six years. First and foremost on its agenda is to become a party again. Ma? Develop cohesiveness and agree upon a strategy for the future that Americans can understand and buy into. The GOP needs to develop a bl blueprint for the future of America. Well, if it, if it involves trickle-down economics, you can't outsource jobs in order to, for trickle-down to work. Oh, but we have to allow those corporations to maximize their profit. But then trickle-down is not going to work. Nobody ever said it would. Well, that's what Republicans always talk about. Well, they don't say that. They never say trickle-down. It's just their idea. Right. But they never say... Hey, we're going to have trickle down economics. No, they have to. They never uh, say that. The, in other words, they're. We have to get to those on top first. They have no blueprint yet for the future. They need a blueprint. Oh, they have a blueprint for the future. Yeah, give to give the top. Give more to the halves. Right. Yeah. And starve out the poor. Well, I don't even think they think that far. I don't think they understand the hurt down below on the economic ladder. Well, no, if, if, if Republicans are saying that Ameri Americans 
can live fine on, on the current minimum wage, like that, that douchebag Joni Ernst in Iowa, right? Iowa, yeah. I mean, if Republicans say things like that, and, and, and um, that's not even counting the uh, bigotry and racism of Republicans, uh, they're out of touch. They're completely out of touch. Well, what the hell do you call it? But being out of touch when they go around with the, I don't want somebody, I don't want my taxes going to support some lazy bum. Yeah, if you need, if you're poor or you can't find a job or you need help, you're a lazy bum because they're under the impression that there's plenty of jobs out there. But Exxon Mobil or GE or something who gets subsidies and tax breaks from the taxpayer, they're not lazy bum. Even though, even though they're blood-sucking parasites. What about the rich who get capital gains instead of income? Are they not lazy bums? You see, Republicans are proven hypocrites, but the, these idiot Americans don't see that. And almost, I, I'm convinced it's 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 a bewitching of America. They're they're spellbound. I mean, they're a like blinding, huh? A blinding. What? Blinding. Blinding, yeah. Yes. Lemmings. It's an blind. emotional blinding. Yeah. yeah. For whatever reason. They, they march in lockstep. They believe the lies, the snake oil lies, uh, and they... They, they have to lo march in lockstep because they feel threatened on all sides by those secularist humanists, those baby killer Democrats, they, or as they call them, the Democrat Party. This is an insult. It's the Democratic Party. It's well, they the can't. They can't pronounce anything right. You know. They do it deliberately. Yeah. They. Uh, uh, you know. You know what's in Democrat? Demon. Demo. Yeah, and then plus they um, they they say the Democrats want to let all the uh, the illegal uh, immigrants immigrants. Who's the one that hires the illegal across, immigrants uh, from Mexico across the border? And they're going to take our jobs away, and Demo uh, Democrats going to want to take all our guns away, and uh, so they're, they're, they're all, all paranoid. They're paranoid. Yeah, the, uh, the 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 corporate America hires the illegal uh, immigrants, people of color. They don't bitch about the the immigrants from Europe. The Republicans, they they or they, or they hired them to to uh, clean their houses and wash their dishes and to work and to make their bed and to work for less than minimum wage to work well, cheap of course that's the whole idea then they like them they like them but if they're not working for them they like them but they're still brown people and they don't want them in this country no they want them to come in work dirt cheap for them and then leave quickly <laughs> go home on the weekends <laughs> oh. get out of here Oh, what a vile species the uh, human race is, you know, I mean... Uh, Equally, at the top of its agenda should be to choose a candidate for the presidency that the party can rally around, and one with whom people can identify. A leader whose integrity is beyond question, unlike Mr. Mitt Romney whose integrity was open to question. That would be someone who can prioritize actions and communicate them to the people without the vitriol, divisiveness, and finger-pointing that so often marks the current administration. Anybody who's guilty of wrongdoing, unethical behavior, or saying anything you know, spreading hate, whatever, should be exposed. Anybody uh, 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 who is a uh, public servant, all right, whether you're honest or not, is under a microscope, and that's the way, you know. That well, how else it should be that way? Is the law going to act as a deterrence if you don't put a few people in jail? Yeah, well, Iceland put through people in prison when they cleaned up they their government. More. They want more. They want to go after more. 
of the bankers. You God have bless to, them. You have to set an example. God bless them. And that includes, they, they would have went right into Wall Street and, and, and locked them up. You Most know? of all, we the people desperately need to feel good about ourselves and become in reinvigorated with a sense of pride in our country. What kind of... And in being American. This person is thinking of America during Beaver Cleaver days. You know, a, a post-World War II, and, you know, in the 1950s. And in daring to be great again. Take a miracle. American exceptionalism. It'll take a miracle. It'll that. take a miracle for that to happen now. Uh, very unique show, to say the least. What do you want to do? One more? The medium income in the United States is $43,000. Really? The 75th percentile on the economic ladder is $87,000. Yet the middle class constituency has again voted against its better interests. That's right. Everything that helps the middle class, health insurance, the minimum wage, tuition aid, Social Security, Medicare, and unemployment insurance are items the Republicans have stood against. And they voted them back in. And more. They have even rejected such previously non-partisan proposals as infrastructure repairs and jobs and job training for veterans. They also have eliminated subsidies to the people who need them while maintaining those to rich, profitable corporations. Yeah, you can kiss all that goodbye now. Well, they'll continue with that, won't they? Yeah, oh yeah, the, yeah. the giving free uh, taxpayers' money to corporations, well, oh, that will continue. Yeah. I mean, everything else for, for the mainstream would, would be diminished. They have blocked any measure that was offered by the Democrats to help the middle class. Oh boy, oh boy. Just to say no to the president. That's right, spite, to spite him. Even shutting down the government in the process. That again, that people forgot, the short memories. Meanwhile, despite Republican roadblocks, under President Obama, the economy has recovered. Of course, had the Republicans cooperated, it would be far better. Right. Jobs are being created where they were being lost. Oil production is at an all-time high and gas prices are low. Millions more people have health insurance. And no one can be refused or canceled due to health reasons or capped out. Yeah, pre-existing illnesses and all that. And they keep their children on the family policies until age 26. That, under these circumstances, the electorate has given the Republicans a victory, sends the message, do nothing! Block everything! Mm -hmm. Refuse to govern! Get us angry and you will be victorious, regardless of your policy. When I think of how well informed the American voter must be to do this, I think back to an earlier election when one woman prominently begged to keep the government out of my Medicare and wonder if that is the level of awareness we have in this country. Did you get that? She's on Medicare. And then she's bitching, she wants the government to keep out of her Medicare. That's your Republican voter. Well, how do you, how do you have he's Medicare? He's the same voter, he's on food stamps, how do you and he's saying, I don't want the government to be paying food stamps for these lazy bums. Because they're just mimicking, they're parroting what they hear on Fox News. Whatever. But you need, they don't think it through. Uh, Medicare and food stamps is part of the government. It is the government. So if the government was out of her life, she wouldn't have these things. Correct. 
So she's uh, uh, cutting her nose off to spite her Funny face. Yeah. She's an idiot. Bingo. Bingo. Oh, man. Laughing stock of the world, America is, and rightfully so. Now that the electric ha electorate has spoken, and very loudly, let us see if President Obama is able to work with Republicans to get legislation passed that will move our country forward. God. For the past six years, and the first two, with Democrats in total control of Congress, the President and his party were able to do what he wished. In the last four years, the President has had Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid as a firewall preventing a majority of bills from the House from even getting a vote in the Senate. The sign of a leader is being able to work with people who have a different vision and to find some common ground. Former President Bill Clinton and then House Speaker Newt Gingrich were able to do that for the good of the country. Oh, yeah! Changing welfare as we know it was good for the country uh, in 1996. What a joke. Well, you said the Democrats could, could actually filibuster. Yes, they have the filibuster out there control. Okay. And then, and then veto. Uh, president has the veto pen, the veto pen and the uh, executive order. Let's see if our president moves a little to meet the Republicans or if he is still going to govern by executive order. I still think the reality of the shellacking his party has taken due to his policies has not sunk in yet. I want to give Again, a Again, I ask, what policy? What's this person's name, this jabroni? I want to give him a shellacking with my shillelagh. This is Ed... Zosinski. You piece of shit. You're of, lucky I don't know you. Listen to this. From Upper Saddle River. One of the richest uh, uh, suburbs in America. <laughs> he's a big money dude. He's, he's probably a, mil, a multi-millionaire. No wonder he's Republican. What a greedy, selfish bastard he is. <laughs> you know, uh, um, uh, you know that anytime you hear the word uh, meeting the republic obama meeting republicans halfway and compromise you know that means uh, letting republicans have their way and control completely Correct. and the people will always lose in that situation Correct. you know one more here okay that's it one more and then i think we're finished with the, i think so the uh, uh, election i think so as a former fairlawn Democratic leader, I am not happy that the Republicans trounce the Democrats. But with President Obama's job approval plummeting to 44 percent and his disapproval numbers at 54 percent, the result was predictable. Well, sure, the Republican Congress, uh, uh, House of Representatives obstructed Obama from doing what he wanted. I'm starting to believe that people from my state are, are, are fucking assholes. Well, they, they re-elected Chris Christie, so they're, they're, they're definitely assholes. In January 2009, nearly 8 in 10 Americans had a favorable impression of Obama, compared with just 35% for former President George W. Bush. That's because, as a presidential candidate in 2008, Barack Obama spoke of moving past the Bush years, finding common ground in Washington to help average Americans. But soon after, Americans saw the exact opposite occur to virtually everything Obama forcefully advocated in 2008. As a presidential candidate, Obama gave Americans the impression that he would use the financial collapse to remake the financial system for the benefit of ordinary people. 
but instead you gave priority to bailing out the banks. He gave priority? Well, it was already in the pipeline from George W. Bush and Paulson. And even though we had an economic recovery under Obama, that recovery has been for the wealthiest Americans, with middle class Americans left behind yeah. as their wages and their wealth stagnated. That's true. And Barack Obama also pardoned uh, G.W. Bush and Dick Cheney from war crimes, <coughs> which they're guilty pardon. of. Which they're guilty. They didn't pardon them. Oh, no? He stopped. I think it was Spain who wanted to punish them. Well, other countries the world can, court. can uh, tell Bar Barack Obama to take a flying leap. If George W. Bush and Cheney go to other countries, they might be arrested. Arrested. And brought to trial. And brought to trial. That's why Same they Same with uh, Henry Kissinger. He too is persona non grata on the world stage. That's why they stay, <coughs> they stay put. Comfortably put, yeah. Comfortably put. <laughs> Excuse me. Put, yeah. Even with the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, his signature achievement Obama gives the impression he's helping average Americans, but he's really helping Wall Street. Well, I don't know. I know a lot of poor people that love their their uh, health care coverage. They're going they're going to the doctor left and right, the dentist. There's their prescription drugs uh, paid for. Uh, they're happy. So I don't know about. I don't think anybody is interviewing those people. No. Yeah. No, isn't that strange? To understand why, consider that the act was designed by Obama in close collaboration with such industry special interest groups as the drug companies. I think it's time for... Insurance carriers and bankers. In 2008, Obama sold himself as a new kind of politician, the audacity of hope. In reality, he turned out to be just another snake oil salesman. Who, who is this piece of shit from, from Fairlawn, New Jersey's name? This is, uh, how'd you know he was from Fairlawn? You said. No, that was the other guy. Oh, I'm sorry. Where's he from? This is from Fairlawn, too. Oh. Story, a snake oil salesman who tells us what we want to hear and then continues protecting Wall Street. <gasps> That's Mr. Marvin Levitt. Marvin from Levitt. From Fairlawn, New Jersey. You're a stupid piece of shit. You probably have, uh, you're a high income person, selfish, stingy, and, and, and very ignorant because you have not mentioned anything about the uh, House of Representatives controlled by Republicans that were responsible for everything you have mentioned. Eh. Yeah. Uh, I think I did just want to read one more thing here. Why, why is this uh, public, why is this, uh, 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 why is the press the, uh, locally, uh, why do they tend to um, have a, 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 a uh, the red carpet spread out for all these uh, right-wing uh, articles. Because they're just interested in winners and losers. It's just a big game. In other words, the side that loses, they want to emphasize people that pick on them. Like, in other words, th th there's I'm no... I'm talking about the media. The media are only... A, you know, it's a horse race. Thing. Like, th 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 like there's no, there's no uh, articles of rebuttal defending Barack Obama it's all all they're all attacking him unfairly so where well, are yeah, they because they haven't they, they haven't put out there like the things that has happened like the deficit being cut in half the, he did a lot of great things well the 10 million jobs are created and <laughs> but the jobs that are gone ain't coming back and what okay. about the obstruction? So you can't do nothing about the them. obstruction by by the Republican House. Well, that too, but the the Republicans like that. 
Because as Mitch McConnell said, we want to make him a one-term president. I, we will I, give him nothing. I know what they like. I'm not concerned whether they're happy or not. I'm talking about equal time for people defending Obama instead of having all these articles attacking Obama. How come there's no equal rebuttal? I have to contact this uh, publication. It'll do no good. And tell them off. They will put in what they want. Well, then it's uh, they are a um, they, they are corporate the whores. Winners. Then they go with the winners. They go with the winners. So yeah. if if the Democrats would have won, they would have written the big stories about the Democrats. Oh, is that is that kind of like? Uh, these jabronis that uh, whatever team wins the World Series right away they run out and buy the, the baseball cap or the jerseys or the jersey because it's like they love to be with Royals! A, Royals! They Royals. love to be with a winner. San Francisco beats the Royals so everybody goes out and buys San Francisco giant jerseys, t-shirts, caps you know they, it, it's like um, Vicarious. They, they live their lives vicariously. Yeah, whoever whoever is on top, they go with. They're they're, they're similar to That's the sick, sycophants. They're sycophants, sy baby. They're sycophants. They're sycophants have their trunks on their asses. Now you know sick, you know sycophants and Pollyannas are similar. They they both kiss up. They are both fawners. Yes, but they're they're a sycophant. Uh, a, a Pollyanna uh, 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 doesn't is not in touch with reality because yeah. everything, everything, uh, every cloud always has a silver lining. lining. But the sycophant is just there, there to ingratiate him or herself with the big boys and girls. Yeah, they have a motive. They have a selfish motive. That's why they they suck up. Yeah. They kiss ass. But the Pollyanna. Is just uh, uh, like uh, goes through life with the rose-colored glasses and the big smile on their yes. face, and uh, everybody's yes. wonderful. Uh, uh, great things are going to happen. Uh, you know, positive thinking. You know, keep your chin up, and you know, and positive thinking will make all the, all wonderful. Or as Joel Olstein would say, yeah. there's a power in you which is more powerful than anything outside yeah. of you. Joel Osteen, that's right, the, the, the richest motivational speaker today. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Politicians are continually enacting legislation and passing laws that govern their constituents, but exempt themselves. A big example is the do not call list. Oh gosh. When I drop my grandchildren off at the school on election day morning, everyone was remarking how starting on Wednesday, they will no longer have to endure numerous calls each and every day from politicians running for office. Not true. It seems to me that our government leaders continue to just not get it and are way out of the loop with what people want from their elected leaders. If they were out and about, they would hear the complaints from just about everyone I know that these calls are annoying and harassing. I get tons of unwanted calls on my cell phone now. Oh, don't answer none. But I don't listen to, if I don't recognize the number, I do not listen to the voicemail. No, it costs you. Yeah, so I, it's, uh, um, I get a lot of automated um, soliciting and uh, crap. I just not hang that up. I know that it would help. Did you call the do not call list to uh, stop those calls? So many. I'm getting bombarded. I know, but it, it might work with some of them. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, that's true. They were, they are wasting campaign funds by continuing to call voters day and night with no regard to whether people are eating dinner, trying to take a nap, or just enjoying some peace and quiet. They don't care. Autom they're automatic. I cannot find anyone who has anything positive to say about receiving these phone calls. 
Can we have these politicians' home numbers so we can call them at home when we get the urge to discuss issues with them? In order to vote, you need to be able to read. I can read, and I received literature daily from everyone who was running for office. I was able to read it at my own leisure, maybe even with a cup of coffee. I smile because of the Seinfeld episode. When, when he had these uh, telemarketer call him and he says, well, I don't have time now, but if you give me your number, I'll call you back later. And the person says, I can't give you my number. Oh. Well, then, well then, you know, now you know how it feels, you know. Stick um, to the mailings and stop the calls. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you for joining us for Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth uh, for our... Uh, hey. Hey post-election doomsday show, the show of doom, Ugh. and you only have yourselves to blame. People, American peoples, lemmings, sheeples, sheeple, sheeples, say so long to these jabronis. So long jabroni sheeples. And when I say jabroni, I mean it. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.